Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, the engineer, with me, Mr. Lady Ada, on camera control and audio mixing. Uh, we're here at the Adafruit factory in downtown Manhattan. Thank you, Mr. Lady Ada. Uh, where we manufacture, test, ship, code, video, uh, tutorialize, document, photograph, and more. All the electronic goodies that you look to use in your projects. Yeah. Um, next hour, we're going to be just kicking off uh, news in space, products, electronics, updates, shortages. We got a jam packed show. Tunes. The um, beginning of the show, that was a little video from when we went to Manhattan Henge, which was earlier this week. That's when um, the sun happens to line up exactly with the grid in Manhattan, and you can see the sunset go through all the buildings. Um, and then tonight is a super moon. I'll be talking about that because oh, it's, it's the code. And then we'll talk about some other celestial events. There's a lot going on today. All right, let's kick it off. In particular. So on tonight's show, the code is super moon, 10% off in the Adafruit store, all the way up to 11.59 p.m. tonight. Go outside, look at a super moon. There's only a couple of them in the year, and this is one of them tonight. It'll be a little bit bigger than usual. Adafruit live series shows. We'll talk about some of the live events and more that we do, including tonight's show and tell. We'll talk about some of the folks that were on show and tell. It was a parade of talent. Time travel, look around in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and more, including a bunch of stuff that's been going on in the news this week. Chip shortage this week. It's ST. We'll be talking about some chips that we ordered and we really, really need. And um, hopefully when we make our plea, they'll, um, they'll send us some chips. We'll do from the mailbag. Read your letters to us. Some help wanted from the jobs board, jobs.adafruit.com. We'll show some factory footage from Adafruit, the advanced manufacturing company made right here in New York City. we got some 3D printing. We've got Ion MPI brought to you by DigiKey. This week is a product from Analog Devices. We'll do some new products. And we have a super fun top secret. So tune into that. We're going to answer your questions. We do that over on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. Please put the questions in Discord. That's the only place we can see them because we're streaming on multiple places. Yes. Please, please, please. please adafruit.it slash Discord. It's free. Join all 34,000 of us. All that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. Is this graphic change? A little bit? Um, about a year ago. Oh. Um, but it did change. I thought it was animated. Sometimes it okay. was. Um, so we are slowly getting some of the parts that we need in stock. So that means we got to update our freebies. Yay, we're so back. What freebies. are we doing? Okay, nine nine dollars or more. We've still got the Permaproto half sized breadboard. As always, people love it. It's a great way to take your solderless breadboard projects and make them permanent. Uh, One forty nine or more. We've added that KB twenty forty, a beautiful pink PCB. Um, featuring the RP2040 that people love this board and chip. It's got STEM QT connector. It's castellated. It now even works with QMK. They've recently added support. Um, so you can actually use it in keyboards. It's got lots of memory and USB-C. Free shipping at 199 or more UPS ground and dun 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 back. It's the Circuit Playground Express. I know you missed it. We did not have enough SAMD 21s um, to keep these in stock and also get them to schools. Um, so we prioritized getting them to students in schools, but now we have enough that we can give them away back as freebies. So um, hopefully for the next couple months, we will have that still here when you order from the Adafruit shop. Okay, and don't forget, if you're trying to get something that has uh, supply issues, like the Raspberry Pi 4, one gig, two big, four gig, eight gig, um, and other items, please make sure you sign up for an account on adafruit.com, verify your email, and do two-factor authentication. You should do that with all of your stuff. Um, I think something like, you know, one out of every company has some type of uh, cyber attack going on, uh, and two-factor authentication is just one uh, extra layer that you can do to keep yourself secure. Probably don't have to worry about it as much on Adafruit site, but if you do this for one site, you might do it for other ones. So it's good security practices. So please, please, please do this. It's also the only way that we allow purchases for that particular product lineup. So please do that. Okay. Um, also want to mention, I'll put the code in the chat, but it's Supermoon. Um, and here's a Supermoon. 
Okay. It's super. We do a bunch of live shows. Mm. This is one of them. Um. So, yeah, we're going to do just a quick uh, mention. Um, someone mentioned in the chat, we probably don't need to do an in-depth um, overview of show and tell. So we, we actually, don't. Yeah, we actually... St- we used to. Yeah, we used to because not everyone Cut would it. see each show. Um, so basically... We do a short. So basically we say, please watch show and tell. Um, I think one of the projects or folks that you might want to check out this week, uh, you get a glimpse of the DigiKey parade that they're doing. Well, it's not... It's a Thief of Falls parade, but DigiKey's in it. I always think it's neat when companies are civic-minded and they do stuff with their local cities and more. And you can see some of the sight and sounds. Also, Jay's visiting... DigiKey, so you can see Jay there. Um, so thanks, Kevin, for coming by and showing that off. And then um, we have a lot of neat wireless stuff going on with CircuitPython and ESP32s and ESP32S2s. Yes. So check that out. On, Live demos. Yeah. On Sundays, we just Desk of Lady Ada. It's usually in two parts. What was this week's Desk of Lady Ada? This week's Desk of Lady Ada, I showed off uh, proto PCBs that I got. Um, we did an INMPI. We missed one because we had we were out of town, and so we didn't do a, a, a Desk of Lady Ada. Sorry, we didn't do a Ask Engineer, and so we were behind on one NPI, so I did that live. Uh, also showed my workflow, and um, I showed off a new STEMA board with the H, uh, sorry, the MMC 56 Zero three. It's a low cost magnetometer. I, I tend to use the list three MDL magnetometer, um, but the prices really um, went up quite a bit, two, three times. And so I was looking for an alternative, which was low cost and um, found one and got the driver working in Arduino and CircuitPython. So I just talked a little bit about how I do that. All right. And then uh, we use your powers of engineering um, to find stuff on the DigiKey site. We call yes. that segment the great search. What was the great search this week? Okay, the great search this week was actually someone posted in the forums. They wanted to find how to match the look of a connector uh, on the DigiKey site. So you know what it looks like and you know the pitch, but you don't know what the part number is. And a lot of um, connectors are kind of called the same thing these days. Or like, it's a Molex or it's a Berg connector. How do you actually find the actual connector? So um, I go through and uh, we show off the beta DigiKey site as well, which is nice and rounded. Um, and uh, I find how to identify um, the connector, and I think I got it. Okay, cool. Um, don't forget to tune in to JP's Product Pick of the Week. We do that every single Tuesday. You can watch the highlight on YouTube, or you can tune in live. We do, I think, one of the only, certainly in the electronic world, but one of the only shows where there is a live broadcast from inside the product page, and the discount's automatically applied. So check that out. And then Thursday, tomorrow, Check out JP's workshop where you can learn all the latest and greatest. JP's working on a very cool, uh, I'm going to call it a, is this like a, so walk, it's a Walkman. It, it's called Walkman. Walk person. It, 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 walk person. Walk entity. Um, it's a really neat retro project that uses kind of all the latest and greatest with a retro form factor. And then check out the Circuit Python Parsec with JP where you can learn a lot about Circuit Python and how many of his projects work. And then on Fridays, Join Tim from a guy for Deep Dive with Tim, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can learn about all the innards of... Lots of graphic stuff. I think he's working on... Um, I assigned him a project to take one of those uh, Game & Watch, like Nintendo games, and yeah. port it to CircuitPython. Yeah. So I think he's working on that. I think he's working on the Octopus game. Yeah, I have one of the original ones, and, you know, that's what is it, like 30, 40 years ago now? And um, what's neat is you have... The ability to do all this in like Python and Circuit Python, so you can make your own. Yeah. Okay. Um, time travel. Lots of time traveling this week. Lots of news this week. First Buckle up, up, let's talk about this moon. Oh yeah. Well. Um, no, just kidding. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a super moon. So go outside tonight, and I think um, if you go online, you can see the comparisons of the size of the moon tonight is a little bit bigger, and you know that's why our code. Is super moon um, depending on you know what uh, spiritual things you do. This is a big day in certain parts of the world. Um, Buddha was doing stuff. All sorts of things happen to fall on this day in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a reminder. Next month is Circuit Python Day, so I'll uh, talk a little bit about this in our Python and hardware section. But uh, mark it on the calendar. August 19th, it's a Friday. It's a company holiday here at Adafruit, but we're doing a bunch of stuff. We're gonna have all day events online. 
and you'll be able to do stuff, especially a show and tell. Um, so if you have CircuitPython projects, come on by and we'll, um, we'll have you on and we'll show and share some cool projects. We're up to CircuitPython 8 and this is, I think, our fourth or fifth CircuitPython day that we're doing. Yes, and we've got so much cool stuff coming in CircuitPython 8 and we'll have some demos. Scott is going to yeah. be going on leave right after. He'll be back, but uh, we'll have a mega demo. Yeah, and uh, we have a chip shortage video tonight um, and that always brings us back to, hey, when is Adabox going to ship? Well, we wanted to ship in April. The chip shortage made us think that maybe we'd ship in spring. Now it looks like it's summer. It's summer. So we're going to be hopefully shipping Adabox soon. We continue to get all the things together for the latest one. Don't worry, we don't charge your card until we ship Adabox. Um, but it looks like summertime is when the latest Adabox is shipping. It's a cool we are box. Starting to, We actually are starting to get parts in. Like you guys mentioned earlier, the Circuit Playground Express is back in stock. Um, yeah. Oh, no, we got a couple sensors in. We got a happening. couple boards. So it's it's some things are trickling in. It's like running through molasses sometimes, but we're still running. Next up, um, we posted this up on our site, and I just wanted to mention this. So a lot of these things never work out, but we went ahead and got the word out and signed our names on it. Um, there is a bill to provide incentives for domestic production of printed circuit boards and for other purposes in the USA. Um, so we signed up for this. We'll try to keep everyone in- Like the Osh in, Park bill. <laughs> yeah, the Osh Park, that'd be kind of cool. Um, it's purple. The, the purple PCB <laughs> bill. Um, you know, it's hard to, to cut through the, the, the news right now because there's so much stuff going on and it's mostly polarized and you really don't hear a lot about manufacturing in the US. You, you basically hear a lot of factions arguing with each other. So we'll continue to be as focused as we can on the things that could help all of our industries that we're in. Um, I have a tendency to think if everyone did science and engineering and shared things, maybe we'd have less problems in general. Um, but uh, anyways, um, we don't have, and I say we as a country in the US, we don't have as much domestic printed circuit board production as we could. And so that's an opportunity. And a lot of people are like, boy, it would be great to manufacture more stuff in the USA. Well, it's kind of hard when most of the PCBs um, are just not made here. So, um, you know, there's some PCB manufacturing in the US, but this would uh, incentivize it and it would help make it happen. Um, you know, we've all seen a lot of the false starts for factories getting built, like Foxconn was gonna do it like 10 times over. Um, so we'll see. So check it out, it's on our blog. Um, the deadline to sign is over, but this is just the, the start of many that will try to help get the word out um, as they come in. So more time travel, we're gonna go back a few billion years. Boy! Um, you know, we normally, so we, we don't really cover a lot of news events. Um, it's very focused on electronics and art and science and education and like maybe we go to an event Hair or dye. something. Hair dye. Um, but it's hard to uh, ignore what happened uh, this week with, um, with the, the Webb telescope. Um, the first image dropped, they did a preview, and then they, they released a few others, and uh, I want to take a look at this. Um, I think this is one of the times where like everyone kind of stopped and uh, looked in wonder for a while and said, wow, this is like, we're, we're part of this. And if you look, you can see the lensing around the, uh, certain locations. And it just seems to fulfill a lot of the, the theories that people you know, knew about and, and just lots of confirmation and just like amazing like, so this is where a galaxy's light bent around either a star or a black hole or a giant massive object. Um, it's a it, it, unending galaxy. This is like if you were to hold your hand out and have a grain of sand um, on your finger, this is what it could see just behind that. And that's how many billions and billions of, of galaxies are out there. And, and the neat thing, and the really weird thing that'll kind of uh, break your brain is, um, all the stuff that uh, exploded from these stars collapsing, eventually collated, solidified, and right now it's you. It's you looking at this. We are made out of space stuff. It's, and it's space stuff that's aware that it's space stuff. So all the stuff that came out of this, and all the stuff that continues to come out of this is us and we are it and it really makes you either feel completely alone or completely connected and it's um, just a reminder of how wondrous and how much splendor there is out there and uh, maybe we could all 
think about that and maybe some of the, the bigger problems would go away when we see how special and unique we are, but also how connected we are with all these things. Um, and we are the things that know that it's things and that's the weirdest part, I think. All that stuff out there is now aware that it's stuff out there. Anywho, um, so some other the photos dropped. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll post them up on the blog. This is a neat nebula. If you look in really close, it's a dual star. A lot of uh, systems are dual stars. It's a planetary nebula. And then, you know, pillars of creation here um, looking pretty nice. That so is. it's just gorgeous. And, um, you know, this is, this is where we live. This is, a, this, is a, this is all of us in many shapes and forms. We all came from this. So um, anyways, it is cool. And, neat stuff. Uh, what a neat achievement for humankind. Um, yeah. Okay. So now that we're back from that billion a year journey, let's, um, <laughs> now, I'm so jet lagged. <laughs> so what's amazing is there's an abundance of minerals and, um, elements and energy and energy. However, is really far away. <laughs> however, there's a chip shortage. Somehow there's scarcity. So yeah. let's jump right in. Okay, this week we really need stuff from ST. Um, it's a chip shortage every day in every way. Shortage. Okay, so life is augmented, but also life is kind of tough right now. So um, I'm not asking for the. Uh, I'm not asking for STM32 F7s like everybody yeah. else. I just want some humidity sensors. And I'm not asking for the, the oceans to calm down. I get it, it's chaos. Yeah. I, I just want to surf better. I need a board to surf on. No. So um, what's the what's the part shortage this week for us? Okay, so this week it's um, ST's capacitive humidity and temperature sensor. I think it's the um, HTS221. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on the next page. What it's, are we using in? It's in this breakup. Pardon me. It's in this breakup yeah. board, the HTS221. And it's like we have so many temperature and humidity sensors, but people really like this one, and we don't yeah. have it in stock. We haven't had it in stock in like a year or so. Uh. And we ordered the chips a year ago, and they haven't come in. They keep getting right. bumped. Yeah. So could you please, 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 please send us a real? It's I your think, own stock. I think we ordered it's like burned into my monitor. a thousand or a couple thousand. If we could just get like 500, we could at least fulfill some of the um, people signed up, people, uh, you know, resellers who have back orders. That'd be really sweet. Uh, thank you, ST. Yeah. So I'm so, not asking for my control. Everybody else is like, I want an STM micro. I know, I know I'm not going to get those, but I think I think get this. So, ST, we'll, we'll drop you a tweet. We'll drop you a note. Um, we ordered 700 from DigiKey back in February 2021. The date keeps getting moved out. Please, please, please. We just need 700. Or maybe at least 500. Yeah. We've ordered more than 700. We ordered a cup. We ordered more, is, but the, we're not greedy. the oldest order is 700 pieces. That's what we and need. And it's been like a year and a Come half. On. Come on. Okay, so if you want to see these in the world, um, wish upon a star or ST, and maybe we will get them. S in your ST. Okay, um, let's do some mailbag. Letters, we get letters, we get tweets, and we get emails. All right, letters, we get your letters, and we read them to our team, and we also bring them to you. I love Adafruit. Could spend hours browsing every crazy product. Most recently, I've been working on a fun house, becoming a central device for my house getting outside weather data via API to go with onboard sensors. I think my favorite product though so far is the Circuit Playground line. I give them out to friends that have any interest in trying out electronics, out the electronic world. I appreciate the continued work everyone does to advance the learning of electronics and programming. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's do some jobs board. We're zipping right along here. We got a lot on the show. Yeah, but we're getting through it. Getting through, getting through, getting through. Well, we just went, we went to space and so time was lensed. Because we, right. we were moving we so moved, fast. We moved so fast. Everyone. Time sped up or slowed everyone down. Everyone aged, but we're the same. Yes. Um, so, 
uh, here is this week's job board. So you can go to jobs.adafruit.com. You can uh, post your skills, or if you're a company looking for amazing makers in the community, you can post up your jobs. Here's the jobs that were posted this week. First one is a hardware engineer, potential for a full-time CTO no. at Bright Smart Rings, Chicago, Illinois. And the Pratt Institute is looking for a system administrator. So if Ooh, you want to- That's a good job. At an art school. Kind of being, cool. a, being a system admin at an, a university can be a very good job. Okay. It's time for some Python on hardware. Okay, this week I'm going to go over CircuitPython Day in just a moment, but I wanted to go through the newsletter. The newsletter is chonky this week. Yeah, a lot of projects. Um, one thing, so I'm, I'm on the um, Fritzing, there's an RSS feed for their blog. And that's the only updates once every year, <laughs> every like few years. But when it does, I'm like, oh, that's a good one. Because <laughs> like you know, I have like, I think 1,237 feeds that yeah. I kind of keep ambient awareness on. And um, when the fritzing one lights up, I'm just like, oh, what's going on? So uh, after many requests and years of waiting, their words, fritzing finally got a simulator. So if you want to check out the fritzing simulator, go to fritzing.org, check it out and uh, look at some of the uh, examples and some of the things that they have. So kind of exciting. Um, I've known folks that have done full on, they've made their products via uh, Fritzing. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, Circuit Simulator is pretty cool. We, I, use a, I use Fritzing every day for our diagramming. We still do. It's, it's a great diagramming tool. Yeah, um, okay. If you want to learn how to make a web server on a Raspberry Pi Pico W, which everyone's calling Picows, um, check it out. And um, the other news that I really wanted to help get the word out on is if you're familiar with Moo, um, or if you just like kind of an amazing approach to programming, uh, Nicholas Toll and Toll, which is how he's known online, um, is doing an interview with the CircuitPython show. So do check it out. Uh, Nicholas is What's the name we had for like the British people who are like their they're thinkers. Remember he had like this word? Thinkers? Remember he's like, oh, there's like the British word for like people who like tinker and think a lot. Oh I man. Know. I've been called a Muppet, but I know that when no, it wasn't, it was, they didn't mean it in a nice way. What's funny is, um, I think- It'll come to me in a second. I yeah, can't forgot I think word. we had banned someone because they were being mean. Um, and oh yeah, they, and they called us Muppets? And, they called me and I Muppet. was like, I love Elmo. And, and I'm just like, oh cool, man. <laughs> I love Muppets. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of like a Muppet. Like, you know, we have puppets and like, and, yeah. but it turns out that wasn't, that wasn't a nice thing to say. Um, I want to say like a badger, but that's not the word. It's something similar. Yeah, I guess mm -hmm. I can look. Um, and then- um, Buffin. A He's buffin. a buffin. Yeah, good. And remember we went and he, and he was, and he said, you told us what a boffin was and we're like, you sound like one. He's like, well, you can't call yourself one. You can't. Other people can call you one, yeah. but he's a boffin. Yeah. If you, yeah. I hope he didn't trick me into like, that's actually a very naughty word. I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I want, I'm a Muppet. Um, so the other thing, and you know, we, we certainly don't mean for our newsletters to be like breaking news, you know, TMZ style stuff. Um, but I think we do a pretty good job putting things in that are, good for people that are doing electronics right now. And one of the things is like, well, what should I consider um, either w to build my hobby around or like s electronic accessories and more? And so uh, Evan, the, um, I don't know what his title is now, but he does a lot uh, at Raspberry Pi, the company and the foundation. Um, I think it was like knighted and stuff too. Um, Sir Evan Upton uh, said, they'll probably have 2 million Raspberry Pi Pico W's this year. So if you're thinking about what can you actually get, because we think about that a lot, that's one of them. And we're, we are looking at um, CircuitPython support for that Wi-Fi module. Again, you know, we had to wait until it was released. Um, it's released under a license. We wanted to make sure that we could fulfill that license because yeah. there's obligations. Uh, looks to be okay and we just have to do the work of porting. Um, so it'll happen if anyone wants to jump in and help, um, we can guide you on it. It's uh, right now we're just, we've already, we were already working so hard on yeah. web workflow that we didn't want to put down an existing project to pick up another shiny squirrel. Uh, you know, we're already um, halfway through this uh, web workflow. But if anyone wants to help out with the porting of the Wi-Fi um, code from MicroPython into CircuitPython, uh, hit us up in the GitHub issues. I like your combination of what happens. So like new shiny, and then squirrel, 
all yes. at the same time. So shiny squirrel. Well, it's, like a, it's a Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> it's a shiny, like a shiny squirrel. squirrel Pokemon. Um, the other project, uh, if you're, you know, an 80s kid, or even if you're not, is um, someone made a kit control panel with Circuit Python, and it's kind of hitting like all the parts of the brain. It's like ah, uh, nostalgia. Ah, uh, Python. Ah, uh, you know, that was such a cool car, and it would talk to you, and it was so nice. And this is like. Advanced, this is a cool project. Advanced AI back in the day before even people were thinking about it. And yeah. if you think about like what would what would be neat, it would be like Kit, like this friend that's helping you out. You're always getting in the mischief or like you're getting... Well, I like that Kit was a little bit of, tr- you know, a little bit of trouble, a little Michael, smarter. Michael, I'll come and get you. Michael, don't do that. It would yeah. tell him like not to smoke and stuff like, Michael, don't smoke. Yeah. yeah. At least that's how I remember it. <laughs> um, so the other thing is um, our big event worldwide together circuit python day so august 19th um we're getting ready to post up all the activities but we think we're going to have at least you know, like an hour plus long um show and tell so come by and show your projects yes and uh we'll have some interviews i think circuit python show folks are going to come by and maybe they'll be doing some stuff so keep tuned to the newsletter, the website, um, we're gonna have an update on circuitpython.org so we can have like a banner, by the way, so you can see like, oh, here's what CircuitPython day is, here's a countdown, here's, so we're gonna just try to even get the word out more and more and more. Um, But we send this newsletter out every single week. Go to adafruitdaily.com and uh, not only you can get other newsletters, but you can get this one. And it's this wholly separate site because we never wanted anyone to think that we would spam them or do anything. It has nothing to do with your store account. It's a whole separate thing. It's all free. No ads, no anything. Unsubscribe anytime. It, we make it nearly impossible to get spammed, um, at least from us. Um, so check it out. And that is Python on Hardware this week. Okay, we're an open source hardware company. To prove it, uh, we post up our code, and uh, we say that we, um, we're gonna keep doing open source, and there's video of us saying it, so it'd be hard to back out of it at this point. Um, but we also have 2,698 guides that show you how to make all this stuff. What's on the Mega big board guides. this week, Lady Ada? Okay, so um, we have been adding, first off, we're porting CircuitPython to the ESP32. We've also been adding Whippersnapper quick start guides to uh, many of our boards like the Feather ESP32, Feather V2, and the V1. Um, so check that out for many of our popular Wi-Fi or IoT boards. You will start to see Whippersnapper quick start guides. If you see those, they're definitely supported by Whipper. Um, a no code way to get IoT data, logging and interacting. Um, with a lot of our projects, you may not even need to do any uh, soldering. You can just plug in sensors on a STEM QT port and you can log them and then do web hooks, um, save data, store data, resp- have emails triggered off of data, et cetera. Um, we'll try and make it very easy for people to do IoT projects even if they don't want to write any code. Um, likewise, I think all these boards also got their quick start guides going. Uh, Brent, Katni, and Eva have been just like crun- crunching through um, many of the board guides to um, add those uh, quick starts. Uh, so yeah, check those out, if, especially if you have any of these boards as well. Uh, ditto on the left, the Pico, ESP32 Pico. The creating and sharing a circuit Python library, um, I updated because uh, <coughs> Windows got fixed and I wanted to make that clear. Uh, for the QDPI ESP32 S3, that also got a whippersnapper page and the NeoPixel 8, got a new pixelate support in S3 using the TFT driver. So if you have um, an ESP32 S3 chip and you want to drive eight strands of NeoPixels with DMA, um, so no timing issues completely out of uh, PSRAM or um, SRAM in the background, uh, check out the NeoPixel 8 library uh, and now has a page for the S3. Uh, okay, and then out to the new guides. There's so many new guides. Um, although, uh, over there, the quick start, uh, Adafruit IO whippersnapper. I think that links to all the quick starts, so that got updated um, in addition, because we're, we're going through all these uh, products and uh, guides to add those quick starts. Um, new guides from Noe and Pedro, we've got the OWL IR TV remote. It's, um, I think it just has like a cool, like tiki lounge look. It's this like funky OWL, um, and it has IR LEDs at the eyes, and you can have it record IR and then play it back when you press the button. Um, so it's like a nice like one use uh, infrared remote or 
uh, controller. And next up, uh, the super simple sunrise lamp. This is Carter. Uh, we had a couple people who really wanted Raspberry Pis because they wanted to build a, uh, this project it was um, a, a sunrise lamp. This is really useful if you have young kids uh, who don't know how to read a clock, but they need to know when it's time to wake up. And so you make a clock that changes color. It's when they wake up and if it's yellow, it's okay to wake up and jump into mom and dad's bed. Um, and if it isn't, go back to bed. <laughs> so this is a lamp that uses um, an ESP32 Cutie Pie and a NeoPixel ring. Uh, you don't need a Raspberry Pi to do it. And it has the correct time, even when daylight savings changes or if you're in a different time zone, actually figures out the local time based on your IP address. Um, finally, uh, Liz made a new guide for the LSM6DS3TR, which is um, the sixth off sensor that we're using to replace the LSM6DS33, which um, was in short supply and then during the chip shortage got completely discontinued. Uh, so we are respinning that board, so that board's been updated. Um, if you've been using anything in the LSM6DS series of IMUs, uh, this is a great IMU chip. It's actually a little bit better than the original DS3 and DS33. Um, and it's available and you can get it and it works very well. So uh, a lovely IMU. Uh, toss on a magnetometer and now you've got a full nine off sensor. Okay, and speaking of Liz, um, here's a little video that Liz put together that I wanted to play. In the Walk Mellotron Cassette Player Mods Learn Guide, you can follow along with two different ways to hack your cassette players. My build breaks out the cassette player's motor and controls it with a L9110 motor driver and circuit python. A potentiometer controls the speed and direction of the tape loop for recording or playback. John Park's build is the Walk Mellotron. The Walk Mellotron is a speed controlled tape player which uses circuit python running on a cutie pie plugged into a DAC which generates voltage in order to change the motor speed through the speed control potentiometer built into the Walkman. Here a tritone is being played, and then when the MIDI keyboard has a key pressed, it adjusts that speed and tone. Check out the Learn Guide on the Adafruit Learn System to find out how to build your own Walk Mellotron. Okay, and we're an advanced manufacturing company in New York City. Here's some footage. And it wouldn't be factory footage without a little bit of time lapse from the Disney building across the street. Boom. It's a pretty time. We're going to do a two for it. We're going to show the IR owl and then a really cool speed up of, I guess it's an excavator. It's a cool giant truck, but 3D printed. Small. Yeah. Here we go. 
Hey, what's up folks? In this project, we're making an IR TV remote with CircuitPython. We thought it'd be fun to 3D print an owl and use it as a universal TV remote. It has an LED arcade button and two IR LEDs for turning on and off our TV. This is powered by Adafruit's Cutie Pie RP2040 running CircuitPython. The IR LEDs are embedded inside the owl's eyes and the IR receiver is mounted to the SnapFit case. Press the button to transmit any IR signal and have the built-in NeoPixel light up and change colors. The Cutie Pie is fitted onto a Permaproto PCB and secured to the bottom cover with screws. Liz Clark wrote the code for this project using the IR Remote Library for CircuitPython. Follow along with the IR Sensor Guide and learn how to decode pulses from any IR remote. In the Mu Editor, we use the REPL in debugging mode to capture pulses from our TV remote. Once we have decoded our pulses, we can paste the array into the CircuitPython code. The code stores two IR pulse arrays, one for powering on the TV and the other one for powering it off. The colors are set up with green and red colors and changes depending on which IR command was sent. With CircuitPython, you can quickly iterate on code and experiment with different IR signals to control just about any compatible appliance. We hope this inspires you to check out Adafruit's line of RP2040 boards and try out CircuitPython for your next project. If you'd like to build your own, check out the guide at learn.adafruit.com. Okay, so before we go on to some Ion MPI, let's just do a reminder. Make sure you go outside tonight and check out the supermoon. But then after you come back. Oh yeah, you should use the code. Use the code. Supermoon. That'll remind you. That big thing in the sky is reminding you to use the code supermoon. Ah. We worked it out with the universe. Thank you. Um, all right, let's do it. Okay, Ion MPI. It's brought to you by DigiKey. This week's new product from Analog Devices, Lady Ada, is. This week it's the Max 98365, which, um, as you can imagine, was born initially at Maxim. Uh, Analog Devices uh, purchased Maxim, so now it's an, an AD device, um, but, uh, you know, Maxim is near and dear to my heart, so I think they get a little bit of credit. Uh, for the original um, engineering and design work. So this is a um, I2S slash TDM slash left justified um, mono class D amplifier chip. Uh, it's what it looks like, uh, you know, in the rendering. It's a uh, BGA um, 12 pin chip, which I'll talk about in a moment. And it is a dun, dun, dun. Uh, teeny cost effective 14 volt plug and play digital class D amplifier um, it's got a lot of specs but the things I thought were most interesting is one you can power it from 3 to 14 volts uh, so you can run it from you know uh, LiPo batteries double A's up to 12 volt batteries um, it does very good at powering both 4 ohm and 8 ohm and 16 ohm loads uh, up to 14 watts um, I think sorry 18 watts on the um, a high end of 12, 14 volts. Uh, if you want low T THD, of course, you'll go down a little bit more, but um, you know, easily 10 to, to 18 watts into four ohms. It's class D, so it's very efficient. The efficiency is very good into eight ohms. Um, it's very tiny, uh, it's very powerful. It's five volt logic compatible, and you can use it with a variety of different uh, digital audio interfaces. Um, so this is kind of like the typical application. Um, it's got this kind of funky thing going on there where there is, you know, normally you'd have, you know, uh, clock, frame clock, and data out. That's like your standard I2S or TDM um, multiplexed 
data and by connecting to the three data pins, there's like DAI, DA, sorry, DA0, uh, DA, DIA0, DIA1, DIA2. And by changing the um, connection, it will auto detect whether it should be like in left or right mode, which I think is kind of neat. Uh, it also means, of course, it can kind of auto detect the bit rate. Um, and as we we'll mentioned in a moment, we don't need a master clock. But really, it's, there's not a lot of things going on here. This is a very simple design. Um, and it's, it's tiny and you know does the job. It, it actually reminded me a lot of the uh, Max 98357, which is a similar part number. And this is one of my favorite I2S amps. It just works um, you know, like the uh, Max 98365. It's a single class D audio amp. Um, you know, you just have a couple passes on the output, but it does a great job with um, I2S in, and I, you know, use this with Raspberry Pis and, and microcontrollers just fine. So the only thing about that amp, this one, is it only goes up to five volt uh, power, um, and only does, I think, like three uh, watts or so, whereas, like I said, this new amp can do up to, you know, 18 watts. Only thing is, uh, this is a cool, this is not the chip itself, it's a different chip, but this is an SEM photo of a WLP, it's a WLP, uh, so it's 12 pins, um, four by three, and it is 0.4 millimeter pitch BGA, which is, you know, a bit tough. Um, but that said, the inner pins, you can usually keep disconnected. You can use the outer pin, so at least you don't have to um, do, you know, blind vias or plug vias. Um, you can pretty much, I will show in a little bit, you can kind of get away with just cutting to the outer pins to do most of the things you want. And a lot of PCBs houses these days can give you a pretty good um, clearance on your 0.4 millimeter BGA pitch devices. So, you know, I'm less scared as I used to be of 0.4 millimeter uh, pitch BGA. The uh, fact of the matter is a lot of the more advanced chips are coming in these chip scale packages. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this has got great power output um, at 12 or 14 volts. Uh, you can get into four ohm or eight ohm you know, up to 18, 18 watts, 15, 18 watts, um, you know, with very low total harmonic distortion. So it sounds, it sounds really good. Um, there is a gain selection pin, um, because like, as you imagine, you know, it doesn't have I squared C uh, for control. Like some nice I2S amplifiers use I squared C for volume control. Uh, this one does not. So instead you use, there's a pin, which you can connect or disconnect, um, if you want to change the gain TDM, I think that the gain isn't uh, adjustable, only in I2S slash left justified. Um, again, this is one of the inner pins, so you know you might want to just leave it unconnected so the gain is 18.5 volts and then just adjust your um, input signal to make sure it doesn't overwhelm the speaker. Um, and this is the package. It's super tiny, um, so you can see the pitch, and I think it's like it's like one and a half by 1.75 millimeters. So it's like tiny, it's a tiny chip. Um, this is some of the examples of wiring. So uh, you can see um, the gain slot is like the middle right pin. So you can either connect it to ground input or leave it floating without having to route through the GPIO um, pads. So it basically means like, look, you know, if there's, there's two gain options that would use a resistor, that one's a little tough. But if you don't mind just bridging the BGA, um, you can get three different, you know, hard select gains. Uh, you know, it's not like a, a thing that totally kills me. Um, it would've been really cool if it was only outer pins, it'd been easier to route. Um, but I think uh, the fact of the matter is everyone wants, you know, AirPod sized amplifiers these days it has to be ultra tiny. Uh, so the interesting thing is this uh, digital audio interface configuration. So basically by switching around the pin connections, you know, it does auto detect um, some settings, but whether it's like the left channel, the right channel or um, stereo mix, depends on how you connect the data clock, uh, the left, right clock and um, the data itself, the data pin, the three uh, pins for I2S, which way you configure them tells you which channel it's on, um, and whether like it, you know, does left justified or, or I2S. So um, there's a big description of it and there's a couple of example wiring diagrams. Um, to, for example, here you can see, um, you know, here's how you uh, can wire it up and it's like one of them would be your left channel and one of them would be your right channel. Um, I'm trying to think which one, it's like one of the pins is connected slightly differently. 
Uh, I think so. And it's connected the same. Oh, it's like DA1 and DA2 are swapped, and that's how it knows whether it's a left or right channel. So the the previous breakout I talked about, the, the max 85, 375 or whatever, there's a pin you have to short to tell it whether it's left or right. In this case, you just change the w pin wiring order. So just keep an eye on that. One thing I do like about this is like the Max 98 357, um, again, one of my favorite I2S amps, is there's no M clock. Uh, that means you only need three GPIO to connect it to your I2S connect, uh, connection onto your microcontroller. And most importantly, on single board Linux computers like the Raspberry Pi that does not expose the M clock pin, this will work. Um, you know, you can always generate an M clock with a separate oscillator, but why pay 50 cents and take up more board space when uh, it'll auto generate the M clock signal on its own, very handy. Um, part of the auto detection of like what mode it's in, I2S or TDM, is that um, it doesn't, it, it will, for it'll auto generate that M clock from the bit clock, but not all bit clocks are valid. Now all that, I looked at them and all of them look, seemed reasonable, eight kilohertz, 44.1, 88.2, et cetera, 192 kilohertz. Um, just keep that in mind, like not, you can't like use 12 kilohertz. I don't think it likes that. So it's, it's expecting kind of standard I2S connectivity or, or TDM connectivity. Um, and finally, uh, just as a note, I, you know, I, I think there's only one version in stock right now, but there are four versions, A, B, C, D, and they, Basically, it depends on how long it takes to turn on and um, when data is valid. So it's like there's a little bit of a, like, does it ramp up the volume or does it just turn on? Does it take time? You know, 13 milliseconds, one millisecond. So look at this table. Again, I think only one of them is available right now. Um, but if you need a custom one, contact uh, ADI and they will hook you up. Available on DigiKey. It's and, in stock. And we mean that. 915 at the time of this printing. Yes. <laughs> By printing, I mean screenshotting. For reals. Yeah, so you can get them. You actually can get them. And I can, I just can show quickly the yeah. eval out. board. I did pick one up because uh, I wanted, actually it was also like, maybe I'll make a breakout out of this board. Um, so that's the amplifier. So it's quite tiny. Um, and this is a, you know, very nice teal. It says maximum integrated, but you know, again, it's, uh, it's ADI now. Um, but that's the chip, but you can see, you know, the total, size of the amplifier, I mean, these are all the headers and connectors, but the, um, the amplifier itself is, you know, maybe three millimeters by three millimeters, including all the passives you need. Okay, and that is this week's INPI. Hi, INPI. Okay, um, before we go off to new products, Supermoon's the code. Make sure you go outside and uh, see our, our satellite. Yes, we only have one moon. Right now. So um, it. Okay, so uh, let's kick it. Okay. New, 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 in the meantime, and um, it's intended for industrial and prototyping uses. Okay, next up. Next up, this is an update. It's a STEM QTification of our popular DRV2605L. Um, this is a really great uh, video that Photo got because it shows, it's actually going through all of, there's like <laughs> pre-programmed 250 plus-ish, um, you know, click and tap and buzz and strong buzz and medium buzz, pre-programmed. Um, designed for vibration motors. It also works with ERMs, although I don't own any. Um, it's now STEM QTified. Um, you still need to solder or connect on the vibration motor, um, but for haptic stuff, you can just plug and play, you know, connect it with a STEM QT like so, and buzz away. Also, you, know, you can always strip the wires and probably just twist them on and it might work okay temporarily. Um, but I do like this little haptic driver. Uh, it's inexpensive and, you know, if you want to drive these little vibration motors, you don't necessarily want to get like a full H bridge going and like program in all the different ticks and styles and shapes. It does a very good job of making a, a haptic interface. Everybody wants to make that project where you make a belt and it buzzes uh, based on what direction you're going. Now you can just plug and play all of them together. Yes. Okay, next up, we got an assortment. This assortment, so I actually got this for me and then I was like, you know what, other people probably want this too. So this is a collection of like 
25 different buttons and you get 10 pieces of each. So I think that's just enough that you can like make trouble. Button and pack. it's a mix of different sizes, different stems. They're all kind of like standard buttons. Um, so you will be able to get more of these. I'll, I'll try to find the matching uh, digikey lid. Yeah, I'm getting in there, hold on, hold on. Um, so for example, uh, here is a sort of standard through hole uh, 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter tactile switch. So this is your standard uh, flat top. Um, but then also we have the SMT version. So same thing, but surface mount. So there's a mix of surface mount and through hole. Um, maybe you're like, well, I like that 12 millimeter button, but I really want a tall stem. This one has like a five millimeter stem, something like that, maybe six, sorry, 10 millimeter stem. Uh, or maybe you're like, well, I want one with a, with a cap so you can add a, a a nice button cap on the top. This is the uh, version with a cap stem. There is a bunch of the, you know, six by six millimeter tactile switches. So this is your standard six by six by five. Um, this is a six by six by 4.3. The, the height of the actuator is, is a common thing you have to tweak and they're always available in different sizes. So a little bit more flat. I like the five, but maybe people want uh, the six. Um, there's the right angle version. So this is a six by six uh, right angle style. So it uses a slightly different uh, pinout. So watch out for that. Uh, let me see if I have other six millimeter. Uh, we have six millimeter flat SMT. I like this kind of button. I remember seeing it first on the Arduino Uno. So um, same size, but SMT version. There's also one that is uh, that boxy shape, but also SMT. Sometimes we use these when you need a little bit more height. Um, there is the two pin right angle through hole six by six millimeter. So it's kind of like, I've actually never used these. Uh, it's a little funky because it's right angle, but doesn't have that uh, extra set of two pins for mechanical strength. So it's just a two pin, but flap is still maybe useful. Um, Let's see, we've got another one. This is, oh, this is a four, 4.5. So these are cute. Sometimes you see them and they're like, oh my God, it's a six by six millimeter tactile switch, but it's tiny. It's a small version. So um, it's so cute, 4.5 by 4.5. Oh, here's a, uh, a two pin, six by six. Again, a little bit weird. You don't see these very often, but um, very breadboard friendly. You don't have to wonder which pins are connected to inside together. These are very easy to understand. Um, so these are good for repairs as well as, of course, designing new products. And then there's like a bunch of other small switches. These are maybe less common. Uh, right angle 4.5 by 4.5. Um, you know, these are pretty common. We've seen three, three millimeter by six millimeter SMT. Um, right angle, we use this, this style a lot in our right angle designs. SMT right angle, three by six. So it has little uh, holes in the bottom you have to punch in to give it mechanical strength. There's the right angle three by six with a lot of mechanical support on the back. There is the tinier three by six, the slimmer style. These are very, very cute and fashionable. The taller three by six. I know there's so many buttons, huh? So this is a taller style. We, I think we use this style on our, our Pi TFT. Uh, and then a bunch of small flat. Uh, oh wait, there's one more, three by six. This is a, oh, it's a, it's a smaller actuator. So it's only the 4.3 height, not full five. And a lot of tiny little tactile switches, right angle, um, flat tactiles. Like we use these on the Cutie Pie. Um, these have a like slightly bigger actuator. That's kind of nice. These are ultra flats. These are like sometimes called dome switches. Um, this is, you know, I don't know what this one is called, but I see, you know, SparkFun really likes using these little metal buttons with the gold uh, plate. They're four by four millimeters. Um, here's this ultra small flat one as well. So whew, you get all those 25 different buttons, 10 of each, uh, great for prototyping repair. Or if you're like, how big is a button that's 12 by 12 millimeters? Well, now you know. All right, let's keep going. Okay, next up, 
my goodness, is this motorized pot. Um, I've always loved motorized pots. You see them on fancy AV equipment. You know, it, we, you can load a setting and all the potentiometers will slide into the location um, that you had it's previously pretty much set. The, it's pretty much the, the, the coolest thing and maybe the reason why many people go into yeah. music, music production. They're just like... Oh, it is. Uh, it's like if you have music... If you're a music producer, I, you're like... Should oh, I uh, go to the overhead now? Yeah, let's go to the overhead because I, I really have to sh show off. So I have oh, this... Oh. I know it's excited. Um, okay. It always has like um, a different feeling to it than other things that move. It's like it's alive. It's definitely alive. So this demo is I've just got my feather and motor wing. So this is a five volt to ten volt motor. Um, you do need an H bridge to control it because going left and right basically is inverting the. Um, polarity of the motor connect. So you need a full H bridge, um, but we have many in the store. Um, when you can, you know, you can make a move to the left and to the right. And then when you don't have a voltage, you can move it wherever you want. And then you would read the potentiometer signal off the bottom here, and it would tell you where you are. So, ah. so here's how it works. Like, let's say you're like, oh, I want it to be in the middle, which this isn't going to do because I have this pre-programmed. Um, you would set it to the middle and then you tell your microcontroller or microcomputer, hey, read this resistance, it reads the analog voltage, and then it would, if you want to recreate that, it would move the um, motor left or right until the reading matched up and it would stop. Mm -hmm. And then it would release it so that you could, of course, tweak it after it's been set. So the motor and the potentiometer are separate. It's not smart. It's not like you tell it, there's no way to tell it like, oh, if I give you half the voltage, it'll go to the middle. The, the motor either is on or off, pulls it all the way to the left, all the way to the right. That's all it knows. Um, the position control has to be done separately. And then this is the uh, slider. Note it's metal. There is one pad here. I don't know which one exactly, but it's in the data sheet uh, that's mechanically or electrically connected. You can use it as a capacitive touch detector so you would know if somebody is touching it mm. so you can release the motor. This has everything. It does have everything. So we will probably use this in a project, but I wanted to get some of these in stock um, so we could do some cool audio projects with it. All right. And the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team at Adafruit, our community, our customers, and everyone who keeps this going is? The LSM 6DS3 Plus uh, List 3 MDL. Uh, this is a 9 off sensor uh, using two great ST sensors. Um, we used to stock one which had the LSM uh, 6DS33, but the DS33 um, was in short supply and then during uh, the ship shortage was basically completely unavailable anymore. And so um, we've replaced it with um, the LSM 6DS3 TRC, which is a really good quality uh, 6 DOF IMU, adding a magnetometer, now it's a 9 DOF. And um, the nice thing about this is now you can use it with uh, you know, sensor fusion to get full um, three-dimensional orientation in space. Um, and so we'll, we'll update our guide, of course, to show you how to do that. But um, you know, this is a very affordable, easy to use, um, and well-supported IMU. Uh, ST has libraries for it. Um, of course, we have Arduino support, CircuitPython, and Python support as well. It's also got some funky, uh, you know, we, we mentioned this when we sold just the individual um, six off IMU, there is um, a built-in step counter, pedometer, and um, lots of interrupts on motion. Um, there's also like FIFOs and stuff. Our library doesn't support the FIFOs, but if you're willing to use the ST library, um, the sensors themselves are actually quite powerful. And then, you know, if you need um, higher quality gyro, you can always upgrade to the LSM 6 DSO or the um, LS, sorry, ISM 330. So I thought I would just show on the overhead. We have a quick little demo just showing off. Uh, whoops, not nearly as big as the accelerometer. So let's zoom in. Uh, so this has got accelerometer and gyroscope. And so you can see the accelerometer measures about 9.8 meters per second, you know, depending on which the orientation is. And then the gyroscope, the gyroscope when I twist it it goes a little nutty. It's like, wow, you're moving many degrees per second. And then at the bottom, the magnetometer um, is measuring where we are in relation to north. So you can use that as a compass. But altogether, you can fuse the data uh, to 
tell you which way orientation is with uh, quaternions or Euler angles. Um, we have a library and example code on how to do that. Um, but there's also a lot of tutorials on how to do that with fusion data using these nine entries. All right. And that is new products this week, Lady Ada. Yes. New, 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 All right. So don't forget the code Supermoon. And while we get over to the questions, I have some lined up. Um, but do go over to Discord to put up your questions. If you put one in, I do have it, but feel free to put it in again. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It doesn't cost anything extra. Um, do go over to Discord, though, Adafruit.it.discord, and we'll get over there soon. Um, let's do some top secret. Yes. This week's top secret is a twofer. First, we're going to show a new line of things we're making, and then we're going to tell you what we're calling them. So the Raspberry Pi Pico W is out, and everyone's calling it Pike House, and they're saying, well, what do we call these? And they're like, well, we'll call it a herd. Um, and then everyone's like, these are cows, Pike House, cows, 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 cows. Everyone well, likes cows. People cows. And so this is our one of our first, um, well, we'll tell you what we're calling these, but this is a Pico W perm. Put a prototyping add-on. You yeah. plug it in, you can solder it, socket it. Um, so, you know, it's like, a, it's like a proto feather wing or proto shield, but it adds a reset button. Um, and it goes underneath the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pical. Yeah, and one of the things is, so there is shield with Arduino, there are feather wings, there is hat. Um, there was- uh, Gizmos. Gizmos, what was the beagle bone? Capes. Capes. And so we're like, well, what are we gonna call these things? And Usually, Lady Ada will tell me, like, on the weekend or something like that, like, hey, like, here's something we're doing. Here's a product line that we're coming up with. Um, what are some of the names? Let's go check with our uh, trademark and copyright lawyers and all that stuff to make sure we're not doing anything with someone else's name. So um, we're calling these bells and specifically cowbells. And let me just give you a little history. So back in the day when we first started doing robotics and CircuitPython, I did this project. Um, and I should say, uh, Jeff Epler. Kepler, came up with the name Cowbells. And this was one that like, it's been in the back of the mind forever. It's like, oh, maybe we'll have like a thing called Bells. Um, but he came up with it. And uh, I'm just like, oh, that's it. I'm so, like one, I was relieved. I didn't have to like go to that path to find it. Um, but the other thing was like, oh, this, this fulfills the destiny of a, a thing we want to do. So we did this project with Cricket that used um, Circuit Python, it, it was fairly new at the time as far as r robotics. And I wanted to do an homage to the SNL skit with Christopher Walken about more Kebbell. So I'm just going to play a little bit of that. Maybe at the end of the show, I'll play, play the whole thing. But I'll, I'll just show you uh, where, where some of this uh, it came from. Yes, that's a smoke machine. Yes, that's a little more designing electronics in the background. Yes, that's what we do at night. So um, that's just the start of it. And maybe I'm I'll play not the ashamed. video. Yeah, maybe I'll play the video later. So um, we, we had this idea. It's like, okay, bells, it's here. Um, we're going to do a cricket cowbell, don't worry. Um, but then we're like, okay, now we can do some of these logos and stuff that we've been um, thinking about. So there's always, we're always trying to figure out a way to, to use a UFO and a cow, but we're not going to do that. Um, so then we came up with, um, well, let's do bells and have it look like a cow. Um, we're not going to use the ones that have any uh, Raspberry Pi logo elements, as cool as it would be, but it's fun to play around in graphic design. Um, but we did move towards like, okay, this is like a pretty neat thing. It's black and white. It'll go on PCBs. Um, it's a bell. It's cow-like. For some people who remember like Gateway Electronics, and uh, they did computers, um, that's kind of neat. And so um, we like the idea of these being called bells for the pie cows. And then um, more cowbell. So every time we release one, more cowbell. We have a cowbell. And when Lady 8 is like, well, what should I do today? I'll be like, more cowbell. And um, you know, we have uh, some of the art ready to go. And then of course, uh, you know. Everyone loves drawing cows. Yeah. Yes, 
guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. More cowbell. So that's uh, this week's top secret. And now you know what it's like to live in our heads. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do some questions. And um, more cowbell. Gold-plated diamonds. Okay, so uh, first up. Um, so DJ Devin asked a question about a 16 megabytes flash chip by Cypress on DigiKey. And Scott came in and answered the question. So I'm just going to skip to the end. You'll need a custom build. The CircuitPython dev channel is where we can help. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, you, you can update the flash memory chips and have it work CircuitPython, but CircuitPython needs to know how big to make the disk space so you can make a custom build. Um, but people have done that. We had, um, I think the tr I think the, the Cutie Pie had a couple different builds based on what size flash uh, people soldered onto the back. And so it's not, it's not that hard to do. Um, you might be able to do it and then we would add it to our collection of boards that are built uh, for CircuitPython. Okay, uh, next up. Um, this is a request. Toddbot would really like an Adafruit I2S stereo output board that has both line out and headphone out, maybe via one connector. Yeah, I don't know of any, you know, only the WM8690 I think has that many outputs. And, um, you know, cause you want speaker and you want line out and you want headphone out. Um, it's just tough. Like a lot of chips don't have all these things and a lot of I2S chips have been very hard to get also. Okay, I want to say hug report and special thanks to uh, Rich Sad, who's volunteering to do the MicroPython to CircuitPython port for the PCAL. Bonk, bonk, More bonk, cowbell. Bonk, bonk, bonk. <laughs> I got a fever. You have to get the cowbell. Where is and it? The only prescription. What? I gotta have the more cowbell. cowbell. We have one. I have a cowbell. We have to go get the cowbell. Yeah, all right. Okay, next up. Um, on the motorized linear pot, is it okay to move the knob by hand while it's being driven by the motor? Will the motor slip in a good way? Well, there's no such thing as motor slipping in a good way. It, it's geared, so you don't really, and it's plastic geared. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I only ran it at five volts, which is a little bit underpowering, and, and you can kind of sort of move it, but honestly, you should wait until detect if um, someone's touching that capacitive touch signal, and if they are, then move it. Uh, or, you know, whenever you're moving it and release it immediately like don't hold the motor which you don't want to do anyway it's not good for the motor to hold it in a position um you want to move it to the location till and you saw it moves quite fast move it till it matches the resistance you want and then release it so that people aren't fighting against it yeah okay there's a little bit of a debate in the chat not really this is a joke um there so the the phrase that christopher walken said uh i thought it was gold-plated diamonds but the the news in the chat is it might have been gold-plated diapers i thought it gold -plated was gold-plated diapers i thought he said diamonds i think I it's gold-plated gold-plated diamonds i think di from Chris why would he say gold-plated because diapers? it's christopher walken it could be either or or both at the same time yeah. oh he has like a he has a um he has quite an accent in that skit yeah um he plays himself uh Next he up. has another, there's another skin in the SNL that's really good. It's like the weird um, tenant Yeah, skit. that is a pretty good one. It's a really good one. <laughs> Very New Yorker. Yeah. Um, so uh, how's the sourcing of the LED filament nudes go and pasta stuff? It's been looking for a special, uh, for a project. Um, they're on their way. I think it's going to be a week or two. Uh, they're getting packaged and, and, and getting ready and, and being sent. Yeah. We did have to do a special order with the factory to get all the different colors and sizes. Yeah. Um, next up. Two-part question, uh, looking to take the Cutie Pie portable. I know about the BFF, just have a different thought. Okay to power the ESP32X Cutie Pie by USB-C with 4.5 volts, three AA battery holder, and two, if I order the USB micro B breakout board and USB-C to be micro cable with the breakout deliver power going from the micro to USB-C. I don't know, actually. Um USB-C cables sometimes have chips inside of them that do like power stuff. I, I, I would, if you want to power it portably through the USB-C port, um, honestly, the best way to do that is to get a USB, like, like lipstick battery charge kit, you know, like the ones that you can get at the store for like, you know, five, 10 bucks and just use that and then just plug it into USB and then charge it that way and, and power it that way. Um, if you want to do with the battery, I'd really go into the battery um, pins on the bottom. Um, that's really recommended. 
Um, and I don't know with USB-C to micro B cables. I, I can't guarantee what they do because um, they're funky. Okay. VBUS may not necessarily be VBUS. It should be, but I don't know for sure. Okay, lady, these are the last three questions of the night because I got to get you out of here. Yeah, I got to go. Okay. Uh, hey, to Fruit, I'm joining the stream and that new uh, nine DOF sensor looks awesome. I'm building a data logger with a nano and wanted to ask if for suggestions for detecting power out uh, without losing data to the SD card. I know capacitors in the mix for that solution, but I was wondering if anyone had any suggestions as to how to go about it. Thank you. It's, it's very hard. Um, you know, you can lose power anytime, but yes, basically you normally you would have a battery backup um, so you could flush data. Um, there's really, you know, SD cards are, these days they're, they're quite good. You know, you'll, you, you do want to flush your data often, but if they are pulled doing a write, it might be okay. Um, sometimes people use something like LittleFS or um, they raw write so that they just write like one block at a time. And so if you lose, like you're not writing to the fat file system or you pre-allocate the file and then you like write into it. So basically what you don't want to do is like corrupt the file allocation table. Um, but yeah, it's the SD cards, there's always a risk of that. Um, and that's why people use FRAM or uh, flash memory sometimes where it's like you only append data um, to, to your data logger. Okay. So sorry, there's no not a really good way to do it and and shut down just in time because SD cards also use a lot of power when writing. Not a question, but a statement. Uh, the connector they believe for the LED matrix power is this one. It's called a VH VH connector, 3.9 six millimeter pitch, okay. two three four five six seven eight PP two dash eight P pin. Yeah, Sounds great. Things. All right. Could, yes. I I'm sure there's the, actually quite a few that fit. I read all these words at once. Um, is the Stemma QTIR transceiver a possibility? Not not easily. That's a tough one because um, th there's no IR transceiver that goes over I squared C and converting IR to I squared C kind of sucks. Okay. And then uh, since that other one was a statement, we'll sneak this one in. Can find I2S ADC. Can find? Can't find? Well, can't an find. I2S ADC is, is like a analog input. Um, and you can, but they're usually set up for microphones or line in, so it's not like you can, you know, they also are, f are fixed frequency. Okay. And that is all the questions. Okay, thanks. Yeah, we got out of here at 9.15. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, so all were so good. Um, you'll get some more cowbell. I gotta have dun, more cowbell. Dun, 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 dun. Guess what? I got a fever. And on the way out, uh, I'll play that other video um, in full, which has um, a smoke machine and LEDs and lots of... Uh, and me ignoring him. Yes. Um, so special thanks to Jesse May running things behind the scenes here. Special thanks to all of folks in the community and in the chat. Thanks for making um, this is a really fantastic, fun show this week and more. You all keep us going. Very much appreciated. Thanks, everybody. Um, it was uh, fantastic to tell folks about all the celestial events including the super moon which is tonight Superman. and uh you know what a cool weird amazing scary joyful existence we all got a chance to look at this week um what a great reminder um how special and amazing it is to know that we're looking at this thing and we are this thing looking at this thing looking at this thing Doing this thing. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This has been Native Fruit Production. Here's your moment of Zener, and I'll play the video after I get us out.